1775 Bible contains information that indicates March is considered the first month of the year, and it also denotes Sunday as the initial day of the week. And so this right here is the Bible from 1775 telling us at the time that we used to have 13 months. V Vader is the 13th month. The first month of the year is March. Look at there, table of time, Nisan or Abib, March and April. Second month is April to May. Sivan is May to June. Tamaz, look at all the way to the end, guys. 13 months. This is like everything they've done to screw up our world and to pretend that we're something different. The first day of the new year is March. We are living in sin by going to church on Sunday. Okay, Sunday is the first day of the week. The Sabbath is Saturday. Days of the week. First day of the week, Sunday. Second day, Monday. Look at that seventh day or Sabbath, Saturday. That's where you get to some real truth. Isn't that interesting? You gotta go back 340 years in order to see the truth. Mark Pyre showcased a weathered Bible dating back to 1775, but its true value lay in its unconventional content. According to this unique Bible, March is designated as the first month of the year, and each week commences on a Sunday. This stark contrast to the globally accepted calendar format, where January marks the beginning of the year and the week starts on a Monday, is truly intriguing. Okay, what does October mean? Well, that means the eighth month. What does December mean? De deck 10. It's the 10th month. You know, so it's like all these, you start thinking about it like, geez, September, what's Sep? Seventh, you know? And it also, Nove, November. What's Nove? Nine. It's the ninth month. And now I, I have it right here before uh, the control uh, which we call the governments of the world, decided to change things on us. Before we proceed with this vital truth, I urge you to invest a moment of your time to like this video and share it with your friends and family. It's crucial for them to be enlightened as well. If you're new here, consider subscribing because we are dedicated to revealing the truth. Thank you for your support. Now let's press on. We are all left pondering the reasons behind the constant changes. Who made the decision to rearrange the order of the months? Why does it seem like we are no longer in sync with the once deeply ingrained rhythm of our culture, a rhythm that was considered significant enough to be recorded in the sacred texts? What if the holidays we celebrate, the ones we've been told were based on ancient traditions, were aligned with a different rhythm, one dictated by this forgotten calendar. Take Christmas, for instance, often said to be a rebranding of pagan festivities. If we were following this old system, where would that leave December 25th? Would it hold the same meaning if it didn't coincide with the winter solstice as neatly as it does now? Could this alternative arrangement of time affect not just holidays, but our everyday lives. This raises questions about the origins of our current calendar and how it came to dominate our understanding of time. The concept that Sunday might be considered the beginning of the week challenges deeply ingrained cultural and religious norms that have been upheld for centuries. This idea raises the possibility that Saturday rather than Sunday could be the true day of rest and spiritual observance. This alternative perspective has far-reaching implications for modern religious practices, sparking discussions about how we perceive and align ourselves with the cosmic and spiritual significance associated with each day of the week. This leads to an important question. Who was responsible for this change? The exact reason for this shift remains unclear. It could have been a gradual evolution influenced by various authorities over time or a deliberate departure from ancient traditions. For example, Constantine is known to have moved the day of worship to Sunday, aligning it with pagan practices. One of the things Constantine did was because he wanted the pagans to worship God, Jehovah. 
was he moved the day of worship to the day of the sun, which is why we now worship on Sunday. Because Sunday became a pagan day. Sunday became a holy day for the pagans to worship the sun god. The way we measure time today seems to diverge significantly from historical records. The transition from the calendar in the 1775 Bible hints at potential discrepancies between our current practices and historical traditions or natural rhythms. This misalignment may affect how we commemorate significant occasions like Christmas and Easter, potentially altering their original symbolism and significance. This conversation extends beyond the mere adherence to religious regulations or astrological theories. It delves into the realm of re-establishing connections with the natural and cosmic rhythms that might have existed long before the advent of modern calendars. By delving into this ancient text, we may unearth profound insights that have the potential to completely revolutionize our comprehension of time and spirituality. The 1775 Bible's calendar, starting in March, with 13 months hints at how our ancestors viewed time in relation to cosmic energy. Calendars were more than just tools. They were closely tied to celestial movements. Stonehenge is an example of this alignment with seasonal changes. If March was indeed the start of the year, it would coincide with the vernal equinox, a time of balance when day and night are of equal length, symbolizing renewal and rebirth in many cultures. A 13-month calendar might also reflect lunar cycles used by ancient cultures. The traditional lunar calendars, employed by various cultures such as the Hebrews, were structured around the phases of the moon. This approach led to a year consisting of either 12 or 13 months, ensuring synchronization with the solar year. This system is deeply rooted in the noticeable shifts in energy that accompany the transition from one lunar phase to another, as ancient societies believed these shifts had a profound impact on agricultural and human cycles. Throughout history, people have observed and held in high regard the alignment of planets. The seven-day week that we still use today is a direct result of these celestial observations. Each day of the week corresponds to one of the seven classical planets known to ancient civilizations. The depiction of Sunday as the first day of the week in the 1775 Bible highlights this connection, emphasizing the sun's position as the most prominent celestial body in our solar system. Exploring the calendar in the 1775 Bible may help us understand time in a way that acknowledges cosmic energy, which is different from our modern system. It's important to recognize how this calendar affected social customs and religious practices. The mixing of old pagan traditions with Christian celebrations is especially relevant when we look at the history of Christmas. To understand this blend, we need to go back to the early days of Christianity. In the fourth century, the church declared December 25th as Jesus' birthday. This date was chosen to align with the Roman festival of Saturnalia and the pagan celebration of the winter solstice. These festivals were lively times filled with joy and celebration, marking the return of the sun after winter. The church chose December 25th for Christmas to make it easier for people to convert to Christianity while still celebrating their traditional winter festivals. But was Jesus really born on that date? Most evidence says no. The Bible doesn't give a specific date for Jesus' birth. Some experts think he might have been born in spring because that's when shepherds would be out with their flocks during lambing season, not in the cold of December. Jesus, the reason why the three wise men were out, you know, in, in the way that it worked out is because they couldn't have done that in the winter. 
you know they couldn't be out in the field sitting around waiting to see the shooting star so they can go to the manger you know it was and then the time of the year where that this was going on where they would be doing these things it's only in the spring because um sheep can only birth in the spring so in the manger you know it was spring it was april it was march and april it was when jesus was born if jesus was born in spring it connects him to Aries, the ram in the zodiac, which symbolizes new beginnings and leadership. This links Jesus' birth to themes of sacrifice and rebirth that many cultures celebrate. The, what's, what's interesting is that the Bible calls, calls it 13 months, but the, the way that they describe the months are almost like the zodiac. Did you notice that? It's actually exactly like the, the Zodiac because it was March, April, April, May, May, June, you know, and, and 13, just like there's 13 Zodiac signs, right? So I think that um, it's just extremely interesting to see that information in a, in a Bible that's 340 years old. In contrast, the date for Easter is based on the lunar calendar and the timing of Passover which is more connected to biblical and astronomical events. Why did Christmas diverge from the traditional patterns of other significant dates? It appears that the early church leaders were more focused on the symbolism of light triumphing over darkness rather than on historical accuracy. By choosing to celebrate Christ's birth during this time, they connected it to the winter solstice, a moment when the sun is reborn, symbolizing hope and renewal. Moses lifted Israel up, and Nimrod came and broke the civilization of Moses. That's right. Nimrod is who you really celebrating on the 25th day of December. You're not celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. And if you are, you're making a mockery of it. You drink more alcohol on his birthday than any other day in the year. And you've turned the so-called birthday of Jesus Christ into a commercial feast of foolishness. Santa Claus has knocked Jesus out of the top spot. And the merchants who don't even believe in Jesus are busy selling you foolishness making themselves rich and you poor for another year on the basis of a lie and that's why they call it xmas because you don't know who it is that you are worshiping well another thing constantine did was move the day of jesus's birth to december because to Muz died on December 23rd and it was believed because Nimrod his father was a hunter it was believed that Nimrod would be reborn in his son Tammuz and his son Tammuz's birthday was December 25th and what you would do on Tammuz's birthday was you would set up a tree Deuteronomy 1621. You shall not plant for yourself any tree as a wooden image near the altar which you build for yourself to the Lord your God. It was believed that in order for um, Tammuz to rise again as his son Nimrod, he would have to get a tree. You'd have to go to the tree. You'd have to cut down a tree from the forest and you'd have to put balls on it. And the balls were symbolic of testicles. The tree was symbolic of a phallus. The halo on the door symbolized Semiramis's. And it was believed that on December 25th, when the tree met the door, that Tammuz was reborn. And you would bake cakes with crosses on them and offer them up to the Queen of Heaven. Jeremiah chapter 10. Hear the word which the Lord speaks to you, O house of Israel, thus saith the Lord. Do not learn the way of the Gentiles. Do not be dismayed at the signs of the heaven, for the Gentiles are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are futile. For one cuts a tree from the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with an axe. They decorate it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and hammers so that it will not topple. 
I hate to bring you bad news, but the Christmas tree was idolatry. Julian calendar created by Julius Caesar in 45 BCE changed how people kept time. It shifted from a lunar calendar based on the moon to a solar calendar based on the sun, resulting in a 365-day year. This calendar had some inaccuracies and a 13-month system that might have been better suited to nature was replaced. Roman society needed a more consistent way to track festivals and farming, and political leaders sometimes adjusted the calendar for their own benefit. The loss of the 13-month calendar might mean we've lost touch with a time when people were more aware of the night sky. There are many gaps in history about this change, leading to the idea that church and political leaders moved away from lunar calendars to lessen the influence of pagan traditions linked to the moon. The 13th month might have been dropped due to superstitions, as the number 13 is often considered unlucky and associated with women's cycles, which were sometimes viewed negatively. If there was once a 13-month calendar that better matched natural rhythms, its disappearance raises important questions. Our current calendar doesn't align well with the lunar cycle, which might lead to a disconnect from nature. This could affect farming, mental health, and spirituality. Many religious festivals that once matched celestial events now drift throughout the year, losing their original timing and meaning. The effects of a calendar out of sync with the cosmos might be more significant than we think. Farming practices that relied on the moon's cycles now depend on the Gregorian calendar, which could harm our relationship with the environment. Spiritually, if sacred days are misdated, the energy during those times may not resonate as deeply. This isn't about questioning anyone's faith, but about considering how the timing of our spiritual celebrations connects to our experiences and beliefs. We're thrilled you found the information we shared to be enlightening and thought-provoking. We genuinely want to hear your thoughts and opinions, so please feel free to share them in the comments section below. If you enjoyed what you saw, we'd be so grateful if you gave us a thumbs up and subscribed to stay updated on our future videos. Thank you so much for watching. We can't wait to see you again in our next video.